Good evening, everybody, and welcome to The Dentist Show. It is Sunday evening, and tonight we're bringing you another good conversation. Um, this is part two of investment opportunities in the tomato industry. I know that last time you guys watched the show, you were impressed. We had over 5,000 people that watched the first one and are eager to learn more on this second one. So if you are watching us for the first time, please do follow our pages. Make sure you share your page if you're watching on YouTube. Share your pages on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. And if you are watching on Facebook, do a, a watch party with your friends um, so that they will get the information as well. Remember, sharing is definitely caring. Um, so before I do bring my guest on, I want to say a big thank you to World Dream It for always supporting The Dentist Show live each and every week. You can join up to 5.7 million people around the world who are sending money back home. I just saw an article today, actually, that um, 5 billion of you people in the diaspora sent money back home to Ghana. This is just Ghana. 5 billion pounds were sent to Ghana during COVID-19. So people were sending money to their loved ones, etc. So guys, listen, send your money using World Remit. It's the best way to send money. Um, let me know that you are watching. I have Kwame Bwaje. I know he's a big fan here. Uh, my number one fan, always watching a dentist show. Thank you so much. Linda has been on here since 6.25. She's like, look, Great work, Denta. Um, watch part one. Can't wait for today's um, event. Um, but good evening to you all. Um, Lorca, we already signed up for the class. Um, came back to watch part two. Fantastic. I'm so glad you joined um, the class, which we'll be talking about as well um, with Dr. Mavis. She has so much knowledge in this industry um, that I'm still learning each and every day. Good evening, Abdul. Buedu, good evening. Let me know where you are watching from, whether it's Ghana, um, whether it's America, wherever it is that you're watching from, please do let us know. Okay. So guys, even though Ghana grows enough tomatoes to serve its market, it imports $99 million worth of tomatoes from Burkina Faso, depriving farmers of its income. This has created fierce competition for tomatoes amongst the two countries. Ghanaian farmers are disadvantaged as tomatoes from Burkina Faso are cheaper and of better quality. Unlike Ghana, the Burkina government supports tomato growers with improved seeds. Farmers across dry um, tomato using solar dryers, which are sold to generate more income. Tomato paste is a lucrative market which has attracted foreign traders. In order, to get in, in order to gain competitive advantage, these privately owned company must, most of which are foreign companies, have set up tomato paste packaging facilities using imported bulk raw materials which they packaged and label as made in Ghana products which they are not made in Ghana. So guys, this is just, you know, uh, background to where we started last, I mean, last few weeks when I spoke to Dr. Mavis. It's shocking that this day and age in 2021, Ghana is still importing 99 million worth of tomatoes to Ghana. Um, so that should tell you that there's a big, big opportunity for us to invest, for us to be part of this growth. Um, the time is now, the time is now for all of us um, to be looking at um, this opportunity. So thank you all so much for joining me on tonight's show. Please, you can already start sending your questions because I know that tonight's show is going to be full of questions, full of, you know, wanting to explore more on the opportunities. Um, good evening. Um, let me read this question before I, I start the show. So Edu Richards says, 
Um, good evening, watching from KNUST. I am a I am the former national president for the International Association of Students in Agriculture. It feels good to be here, and I'm so glad that you are here, um, Adu Richard. Thank you so much for joining me on tonight's show. Um, what we are coming to do today and what I do on every show is that we want to find solutions. Things are already happening in Ghana, um, but what are the solutions? What can we do to make a better market for our farmers, um, to get better seeds for the farmers, um, and to see the innovative ways of producing things in Ghana? Um, and so without further ado, let me introduce... Um, She's a mentor. She's a great woman, honestly. Dr. Mavis onto the show. Hey, Doc. Hi, Adenta. You're on Good to see you again. Good evening. <laughs> I know, good to see good you. you know, um, I, think that, I think that we have a show on, uh, the two of us, we have our own personal show because each and every I time know, right? <laughs> that we're, we're, we're coming on, there's like so many people that are interested in the yeah. tomato industry. And I know that we need to recap on the part one. Um, so I do need you to reintroduce mm -hmm. yourself um, and what you are doing. And then I'll bring on um, our guest as well, um, who's you know gonna be joining us all the way from South Africa. I think K Entry, um, I did get a message that we might have somebody from um, the Ministry of Trade. And I think he's joined on as well. So we'll invite him onto the stage as well. So. Doc, if you don't mind, just reintroducing yourself, what you do, your background, and then we'll take the questions from there. Okay, thank you. Um, so my name has already been, um, well, if you want me, do you want me to reintroduce myself? <laughs> I'm Avis, yes, of course, please. and um, <laughs> uh, it was a Rekwa Sari. I call myself, uh, I define myself as a passionate food scientist. And um, uh, my research, focuses on looking for practical solutions, convenient solutions for uh, fruits and vegetables. I'm currently uh, working on uh, solar drying technologies for adding value to tomatoes. So I also consult, uh, food safety consultant for um, people in the agri uh, business space uh, and food processing. And um, currently uh, looking at uh, having organizing our mating uh, training program uh, for uh, tomato processing. So after so many years of doing the research, doing a lot of background work, we finally have uh, a program that we have put together to share the ideas that we have. And that's through a training program coming off on the 10th and 11th of June. And I encourage as many of you who can make it to be part of this. It's for people who want to process this at home to make a business out of it. Um, health conscious Ghanaians um, who want to walk the talk, uh, you know, to make uh, things local, to use what we have in this country. Uh, so much talk about what we are doing and what we are not doing. Um, promoting this training for you to come learn practical methods that you can employ to empower yourselves, you know, and also pass on to others. So in a nutshell, um, that's how I'll describe. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> Ghanaians are always modest when they are uh, introducing themselves. But as we go along, I'll be dropping the hints of the amazing <laughs> things that <laughs> you are doing, Doc. Um, but tell us, I mean, I've got the flyer on about the tomato pasting yeah. and marketing training. Doc, why mm. is it important for us to be making um, our own processing in Ghana here? Denta, we eat so much tomatoes, we eat so much tomato product. And for a country who eats that much, you should be producing that much to feed yourself. We talk about devaluation of the city, we talk about, um, you know, how, how prices keep going up and we don't have control over our own monies and all of that. But if you are importing, you're putting the money into someone else's hands. So you will definitely have issues with your economy. And for a country like ours, we do not have a choice now. I say we do not have a choice now because I'm hoping that through uh, programs like yours, 
we can begin to change you know our mindset and change our attitudes and put things in our own hands so we're hoping that um these trainings are coming in to help us address the situation and do it in a very practical uh, manner but we're focusing on this training uh to teach different uh, processing methods looking at um drying of tomatoes looking at um Canning, that is the home canning of tomatoes, uh, to, tomato paste production, because these are the forms of products that we consume, value added tomato products that we consume and import into the country. We don't even import that much uh, dried tomatoes into the country, but then tomato paste is uh, made of uh, dried tomato. And so if we want practical of making the paste that we so much love, that is an alternative um, processing uh, technology that we can look at to, you know, process uh, tomato products locally. Now, we are the number two importer of tomato paste in the world, and that is a concern. You know, Nigeria is, uh, um, they're more than Ghanaians, you know, and they also eat a lot of tomato products, but they are not um, importing that much uh, into the country, even though they also consume uh, a lot of uh, tomato products and tomato paste. They have made efforts to also empower themselves locally to uh, process tomatoes using local tomatoes. And of, I'm saying local tomatoes because we can use local tomatoes. And we'll be talking a lot more about it in the program, about our variety, the varieties that we have and what we can make out of them. So I would just want to, um, uh, as the conversation progresses, we'll be delving into these things. But yes, we don't have a choice if we want to cut down on the imports of tomato products. If we want to eat healthier, the word here um, being a flag, or I mean being projected as <laughs> healthier tomato products, we have to go local. And yes, we may have had challenges with local production of tomato products, including tomato paste, but yes, we are here today on the program to also talk about practical methods, low cost methods, um, new methods that we haven't even thought about, uh, how to employ those methods to produce uh, tomato products locally. So we'll be looking at different products, I mean, different topics on the program, marketing, uh, agribusiness, how you can position your brands. It's, it's a very um, important uh, training. Um, everything will be catered for and you will leave the program very satisfied and very knowledgeable and ready to, uh, you know, take on the challenge to be to be part of uh, people who want to commit to this. Absolutely. But Doc, what, how does how uh, how do you feel when you hear numbers like 99 million worth of import of tomatoes into the country as somebody who's so passionate about the industry? How does that make you feel? First of all, it's, I mean, it's very disheartening. But when I look at where we are even importing the tomatoes from, that is fresh tomatoes, we're importing from Burkina Faso, $99 million. We are making the farmers richer by giving them this amount of money. And we have our farmers in Ghana who are poorer. The plight of the tomato farmer is nothing to write home about. In fact, I've I came to, I, I fell in love with tomato research because I, I stumbled on an article where Ghanaian tomato farmers were committing suicide because they were losing their harvest and not wow. getting, um, you know, uh, uh, the way they had invested in a particular year and could not recoup on their investment. And people resorted to committing suicides because they couldn't pay off their loans. Some farmers leave their product on the farms to rot, Denta. And you were wow. shocked when I told you this the last time around. Yeah. They, it's better off they leave the produce to rot than to even pay for people to harvest and not get people to buy. And we all know this. We look, you know, you travel into these process uh, production areas and you see the, 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 the waste the losses, which is up to like 50%, you go to the markets and you see tomatoes rotting away because they are not sold or the way they are stored, the way they are displayed in the markets, the way they are um, packaged. Even the packaging material of tomato 
also uh, adds up to you know the, the t deterioration so they're just genuine um, issues around the whole tomato value chain but giving a country Burkina Faso which is drier than Ghana you know um, 99 million dollars well your farmers are, are, are dying are going hungry are losing out it's not only sad it's unfair and I have I have um, advocated for tomato farmers to be uh, taken more seriously. Imagine, Denta, if tomato farmers decide that because they're losing out, they will not grow tomatoes in this country. They will invest into other crops. Mm. Would you get your jollof rice that you boast about? No. Would you be getting your, um, of course, yeah, you may decide to use 10 tomatoes, but of course, we also consume fresh tomatoes. Will you be getting your, um, um, you know, mekwaye tree and kenke and all of that? You know, we, 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 we are not being fair to these farmers. They're losing day in, day out, but they are committed because they are even content with the little money they make. But if we're giving this much to Burkina Faso, what are they doing right? Those are some of the questions that we, we need to ask. Exactly. Exactly. We know that, yes, they use irrigation. Also, they have other uh, incentives. We also know that, of course, some variety, uh, you know, varietal uh, varieties or the kinds of varieties they have might also be a plus. But we can solve the issue. We can equally match up to them if then uh, we are committed. And if we don't just talk and talk every day, every year in, year out, we talk about this. Yet we don't do anything about it. And when we see videos of tomato paste made in China, you know, where they're adding all kinds of things. And then we panic and then we start asking questions. Why are they important? Why? No, we are all part of the problem. So I want us to walk away from this uh, program also to make commitments, okay, that if we have alternative methods to come up with these value added tomato products, we as Ghanaians should make it a conscious effort. We should educate ourselves, but we should also be committed that we're going to come, I mean, depart from consuming these products that's also one sure way of of you know kind of unless people and companies take us serious and are willing to give us the quality products that we deserve we have the right to also you know um demand for the best and also demand that we begin to do this locally so that we can um protect our you know our purses as well as our health yeah I totally, I totally, totally uh, uh, agree with you, Doc. But why is it that we, the farmers, are losing that 20 to 40% and even up to 50%? So tomatoes, obviously, are the key components in the diets of a Ghanaian household. As you said, jollof rice, everything. We use tomatoes for <laughs> everything, okay? So approximately, what is it, 440,000 tonnes of tomatoes are consumed annually, which is an equivalent to 40% of a household vegetable, right? Um, so why is it that we're losing so much? Why are the farmers losing so much, um, Doc? So um, tomato is a highly perishable crop. You're looking at a crop which is about 90% water. So it's highly perishable by nature compared to other uh, vegetables, leafy vegetables, or even you know um, similar vegetables like uh, that we use for cooking, like garden eggs, okra, pepper, and all of that. It's, it's, it's way up there, the water content, which makes it very susceptible to spoilage. So for a crop like that, if you are looking at the whole tomato value chain right from production till it ends up on the table you have to put in certain measures to make sure that you reduce um the level you slow down spoilage if possible but then also reduce um the way that it is um easily compromised so if you look at uh, post-harvest losses which we're seeing um is as high as 50 percent right from our uh, harvesting, the way we package tomatoes from the farms. We're using wooden crates mostly, right? So you see those wooden crates that we use to transport tomato to the city? Even if you look at the container itself, it's a wooden, uh, like well, uh, wood, which is not even well planed. And um, if you look at how we put the tomato in, it even gets a lot of bruises from that kind of packaging. Um, we have to modify the way we package um, tomatoes from the farm because that kind of packaging does not even 
um, support uh, the tomato because if you get a little scratch here, a little you know um, tear on the skin, spoilage begins. You have microorganisms beginning the process of spoilage once you have um, an opening. So from even the packaging, from transportation, we mainly used to cars, open trucks, um, where the products are displayed in the full glare of the sun. You have um, the sun, of course, harsh, being very harsh on a vegetable. For a, such a vegetable, you need to transport in cold storage if possible. So from transporting all the way, you know, sometimes all the way from the north to the south, and then you come, it's, it's um, transported to the market. You look at the way it is displayed in the open, in the you know full glare of the sun with insects, so all those things compromise uh, to, uh, you know the quality of tomato. I did some work on assessing the quality of tomato uh, from the farm at every stage, tra being transported when it comes to the market. I, I followed the, the the quality by analyzing daily as it's even on the market, you know, and okay. being sold. You look at how it degrades so quickly. You are practically left with half or a quarter of uh, the, 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 you know, nutrients by the time you purchase it. So the value chain is very compromised and it does not really help the quality. So these are some of the things that help uh, increase the losses. And of course, when you, the farmer harvests at the, uh, on the farm and doesn't get um, the products move quickly to the sales point. It also begins to deteriorate fast. So within three, four days, if you don't really store it very well, the, you need cool or cold storage for tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And we don't, we practically don't do that apart from the mall supermarkets who now, you know, put it in cold um, and the cold storage when it's being sold. We don't have that in Ghana. However, we are saying that you can come to, you look at the ch value chain, you can uh, therefore help to pro preserve the tomato at a certain level so that you don't speed up, you know, the, the deterioration. For instance, uh, like I mentioned in one of my articles in Burkina Faso, farmers even dry the product on farm. So imagine this um, uh, farmer who would have to leave his product on the farm to rot because he's not getting market or leave it by the roadside for days without anybody purchasing it. If he's able to reduce the moisture content I've talked about from 95% to about 10%, 15%, which makes it a lot more stable. And in a very hygienic way, it's taught how to do it in a very hygienic way because the sun dried tomatoes as well, and it does not really enhance the quality. So we are proposing solar drying. If he's able to do this at the farm, you reduce the, um, the moisture content and you reduce the quantity, um, the volumes of the tomato. It's easy for you to package. It's easy for you to do what, Denta, to transport, isn't it? Transporting a dry food and a wet one is, is they're two different things. So you can able to, you'll be able to transport to whatever part of the country without encountering those huge losses that I've talked about, the losses that we see, um, which is about 50% when it comes to post harvest losses. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doc. I think I'll let um, the other guests come on and uh, we'll delve into um, the conversations more. So we have Thienus um, from South Africa. Um, he has worked in South Africa Depart Department of Agriculture, um, Nando's, um, Chicken Land, Fruit, uh, First Fruit Health, um, All Joy Foods, Olam International, contribution to tomato processing, established the Olam Tomato Canning fact, um, fact Facility in Tema in Ghana. So please welcome Dianus to the show. Hello. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes. Good evening. How are you? I'm, uh, I'm fine. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us on tonight's show. Uh, Aquaba. <laughs> you are Aquaba. Is is you actually you saying Aquaba? Aquaba. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Welcome. So welcome, welcome on the show. Um, you, so you know, I know I've kind of said a bit about your <laughs> background, but if you can just tell us how you got involved in, you know, in the tomato space. 
um, for such a long time and, you know, going to different big, 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 big companies that you have worked for as well? Uh, yeah, I think um, the, the company I mentioned, All Joy uh, Foods, uh, uh, I did uh, a lot of tomato products from tomato sauce, tomato paste, uh, obviously all from imported from China. And uh, Olam International came to visit the factory in South Africa, and somehow uh, <clears throat> they made me an offer to set up the factory in Tema. Now it was a it was a brownfield project. Uh, uh, Olam acquired the factory in Tema from the Rousseau family, uh, it, uh, the biggest uh, growers and producers uh, processors of tomato in Italy, Trusty Food Limited. And uh, I was appointed to upgrade the facility. <clears throat> and uh, basically what it is, is a repacking facility. Uh, <clears throat> concent concentrate them, you know, and you add water and stuff. <laughs> that's, that's all it is. There's no, there's no processing going on. It's just the uh, repacking. <clears throat> so I started uh, 2012, uh, moved to Ghana, and uh, uh, <clears throat> I, Moved back to South Africa in 2017, but what I what I what I I started asking questions. Uh, the thing is, people set up. Uh, uh, why do they uh, Why do they put uh, uh, factories up uh, like Italians and now the Chinese as well and Urams? Uh, why do they put factories in, in Africa, in Nigeria? It's because they compete. As uh, Dr. Mavis was quite rightly saying, <clears throat> they want to get competitive advantage. So the assumption is okay. If we bring in bulk raw material, duty is 10.5%. If we bring in finished goods, cans, it's 35.5%. So it makes logical sense that you bring in a bulk and you pack the tomato. But uh, I need to get to the problem there. Uh, <clears throat> after the first month, month of commercialization, uh, my factory had a 2 million US loss. The same in the second month, the third, fourth, so it went on. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> so I went to the market and I said, what is the story here? And uh, I opened up a few of well-known brands there in uh, the Cola Market. And you know what's inside is not tomato paste. <laughs> you know, what? It's, it is uh, it's definitely not tomato paste. <clears throat> so the, the, the story, the tragedy, tragedy of uh, Kenya of West African tomato is uh, uh, at the end of the previous century, 1996 to 2008. It was like in Tugana, a 700, 628% increase of tomato paste. The Food and Agriculture Organization writes about it and they say increase in uh, imported tomato uh, paste filled with additives. What they neglect to say it's food fraud because their own organization, Codex Alimentarius, defines food fraud as <coughs> uh, misrepresentation and substituting. <laughs> so, what What's happened, they reduce tomato content. They add things like soya. People don't know that. Okay, so <coughs> um, we were at the point of shutting down the, the, the facility. And then I said, no, okay, look, we know what the consumers want. Because the FAO made a point. They say the consumers taste the shifted and fail of these imports. So I said, okay, <coughs> let us do what the consumers like, but we do it legally and we register this name tomato mix. Not to not to cut you. I think the audience are struggling to hear you. Um, they're okay, saying no. clearly. Uh, I'm not sure. Can't hear well. Uh, okay. Loud, please. So I don't know whether it's yeah. It kind of it's dripping in and out. I don't know whether you do. You have an earpiece you can put into your. No, um, no. Unfortunately, I don't have mine. Is it better now? Um, um, you. So. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, it just kind of dips in and out. But yeah, if you maybe can just raise your tone a little voice. bit higher. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Let's try okay. All right, I don't know where I came to. Okay, uh, the thing is, uh, tomato paste sold in the West African market, uh, market is not tomato paste. Tomato paste is a law that says it's going to contain so many tomato, but comes in contains three times less. That's why... Uh, Ghana, Ghana and West Africa tomato processing does not get off the ground. What tomato uh, is not called red gold for nothing. It is red gold. And 
everyone gets into this market. So every every uh, every uh, uh, on sundry trades in this this market. So people like uh, like the Rousseau family has burned their fingers because now they come to Ghana, they are under scrutiny of the FDA, uh, GSA. They have to pack the mud or paste. But what comes in is three times less the legal requirement. <coughs> so then, uh, you know, I, I saw all this the martyrs going waste. I'm an African citizen, and you know, what is this? This is, this is not right. And uh, uh, since 2017, I endeavoured to, to 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 see how we can solve this problem. Our farmers are poor. We have these high losses. And uh, uh, <clears throat> the, the confusion is created in the tomato industry with a purpose. People come up with these terms like NTSS, natural tomato soluble solids. The normal normal people don't know what, what it means. Then, the, then the, the story goes, yeah, the problem is <clears throat> the tomatoes is not good enough. Uh, <clears throat> there's too much water in it, uh, too less fiber, too little fiber. Okay, it's true, right? But <clears throat> if you bring a tomato from China and you compare it with one cost-wise with one in, in, in Ghana, uh, even though the, 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 the Chinese tomato has less water content, it takes a lot of money to bring it from there. So what I've done is I did uh, uh, some research, development work. I used tomatoes I got from the market. Uh, I won't say any old tomato, as long as tomato is sound in a good color, uh, I devised the system. I made samples in household kitchens, in hotel kitchens. I did consumer surveys using Tasty Tom Gino in a, a comparative test. And, and guess what? Tomatoes, this poor, not good enough tomatoes from, from Ghana, <laughs> uh, the consumer scores will definitely buy. Overall satisfied, just right, scores better on color than. Than, than, than Tasty Tom and Gino, and that is normal tomatoes. <clears throat> so we have, a, we have a processing system. Another confusion is uh, if you go to Nigeria, uh, you see the Dangoti Group uh, factory there, 22 million investment. It's huge. You go to Northern Star Tomato Company, I visit the Palugu. It is massive factories. <laughs> Um, it's European technology, Chinese, Chinese technology. It's inappropriate for our socio-ecological systems. Uh, <clears throat> tomato, tomato sauce, tomato ketchup, tomato paste needs a evaporation process. Now, uh, the process, the process, the tomato Hello, gets. Can I, just, can I just ask the question? So, is Gino's oh. not, Gino's not made in Ghana? Uh, no, Gino, Gino, uh, sachets, the sachets is made in yeah. Ghana. The, 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 uh, the, the, the cans is yeah. packed in China. Okay. So that advert, Gino really cares. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's, 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 it's made in China. <laughs> Everything is okay. <laughs> even, okay, even Gino, Gino in uh, Tema have uh, the factory. That's Chinese uh, company. Okay. Everything there is from China. Everything. Okay. Wow. And you're saying that there's more sugar in the tomato puree than the actual tomatoes. Okay. Let me tell you what's on the market. Uh, I mentioned this term NTSS. Uh, uh, forget what it is. See it as tomato content. The, uh, the, the international standard and the GSA standard and NAFDEC standard. It must be 24% of this term NTSS. What you find on the market is 80%, right? The rest, the rest is bulking agents of which soya, right? Sugar, maltodextrin, colorants. That's what it is. <laughs> so the, it's not tomato paste. All right. Uh, um, the, 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 the thing about tomato mix, which is a good thing, they declare the ingredients. But what comes in, what comes in, it says tomato paste, the soya in, it's an allergen, it's not even the trade. Okay. So my message is to, to Ghana, we can produce, process local tomatoes as is currently, right? You need the right processing systems and methodologies that I, that I, that I call it. 
and we have such a system. <laughs> and what Dr. Mavis are doing with trying, <clears throat> this complement each other. <clears throat> but the system we have is like a fraction of the price that you will pay for a Northern Star Tomato Company. Um, those are like 15 million US investments. It does not work. It does not work. Uh, it does not work in any African country, even South Africa. It doesn't work. It's the wrong technology. So even in South Africa, only 10% tomato gets processed. The rest comes from China. So, uh, wow. yeah. Look, people that people that listen, there is no reason. Uh, 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 Denta say the time is now. <laughs> the time is now. Uh, we have proof. We have tested samples in the market with consumers, right? We have prototypes of our processing system. What Dr. Mavis do with the drying, you can do the most beautiful tomato paste uh, <clears throat> uh, that you won't believe. Uh, what, what, what needs to be understood, the consumer currently has a particular taste or a preference how the product is they must buy. It must be thick. So they put their hand in and they call, call it a ball paste, right? So they roll a ball. Now, never, nowhere in the world is tomato paste like tomato paste is soft. So here I have a package of soft paste. <clears throat> now, with, with uh, uh, our, our processing system, right, we get this characteristics that the consumer wants without additives, right? So we... <laughs> We can increase tomato content. We can go to do a real tomato paste, right? Cheaper than, 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 than from imported source. It's just a matter of having the right systems. So, Fiona, what systems do we need? Because, and I mean, Mavis, why, why are we accepting things up from China that's basically practically killing us, really, when you think about it? I mean, wh why is why is our country accepting it? I'm just smiling at you, <laughs> then, <Denta. laughs> because, well, it it, it it is what it is. Um, it's cheaper to bring in the bulk product where you're paying a smaller um. Uh, tax than bread. And initially, we were consuming a lot of tomato paste. Now, like I told you last time, I sent my students to go to some markets and supermarkets, and we could only find two brands of tomato paste. Now, Thainis was saying something about uh, natural tomato soluble solids. So, the, this indicates the actual tomato in a product and for tomato paste we have different paste I and mean, we have triple concentrate we have double concentrate the more concentrated the better but it also means you pay more so yes when we have we had tomato paste on the market um according to the standard it had to meet the standard so that should contain 24 percent natural uh, tomato soluble solids and that means that they have more tomato in the product right and so if you're selling this product and you realize, hmm, Ghanaians like this product too. They don't even know the difference. And we are, bring, we are putting so much tomato paste. Maybe we are not making enough money, even though we have found an easier way of bringing a bulk product. And then we just come and repackage and sell as tomato paste. But there is tomato mix, which has also been accepted. You know, the standard has been accepted for us. You know, um, they've been given a, a standard on that. So. It is a product that can be made, but that product has 7% natural tomato soluble solids. So if I have this product where I can add other um, products to it, you know, like um, it permits the addition of artificial color and um, some other additives, and I can make this and call it tomato mix and still get people to buy without realizing that this has less tomato and still make the money why not if you're getting people to buy and like he was saying it's all about consumer taste as well they somehow do not realize the difference in the taste i mean and it's cheaper so now we have all gravitated towards um tomato mix 
and now it has displaced tomato paste, which even by the standard, I was hoping that we could even uh, have demand for triple concentrate because this is a country where we consume a lot of tomato paste. So why not go for the, you know, the highest standard? But anyways, that is what we had in the country. So now we don't even have tomato paste. I've been looking for tomato paste and I don't get tomato paste on the market. And it has been replaced with mix, which is a, a, a cheaper uh, product, which can be made easily. That's what he's trying to say. We couldn't hear him that well. What he's saying is we can make local tomato mix at a higher concentration of natural to uh, soluble solids, the NTSS, of about 12%, 14% using our local tomato. Because we are saying that, oh, our local tomato is not um, rich enough. It has high water, whatever complaints that we make. However, this we can use this to produce. He has used certain methodologies and methods to come up with a mixed product which has no additives, um, the kind of additives we, want, we are avoid, trying to avoid, has a higher natural total soluble, uh, tomato soluble uh, uh, solids. And using our local materials, using a technology that people can invest in, not too complicated, like the, uh, the factories that we have abandoned because we could not um, run, because those need higher energy to make paste. You know, you have to heat the product to concentrate it and all that. We can make tomato mix, which has been accepted, devoid of uh, uh, artificial additives, devoid of all the, the um, carcinogens or allergens, you know, because they're adding soy. We've seen the videos then that I'm not sitting here saying, okay, I am not sitting here saying, because I haven't gone to factories to look at what they're doing. But the truth is some of the products that are coming are full of uh, things to be in there. And you ask yourself, how come they pass? That one is not, uh, I don't know how they pass. They come into the country. And that one, I, I don't know how they're able to come into the country. But if products are coming in and we are testing to say, okay, it is wholesome, how come we still have products that are not wholesome, you know, entering our markets? We've seen the videos about products uh, being made in China with all kinds of additives. And I think I want the, um, my colleague to expand a bit more because he knows a lot more of what is done to some of these products, some of the additives that they add that escape the eye of the authorities, how they manipulate the colors and, you know, all the things that they do in order to give us some products that is substandard. Because sometimes when they're bringing the product, because of where the products are kept in warehouses for months and months, they tend to darken and because they, they, they're bringing them to Africa, they end up bringing them in here. When they bring them, they add all kinds of lightening agents, you know, to lighten the color up. And then they add color and they do all kinds of things and package it and sell it to us. Yes, they go for registry, you know, certificates and all of that to produce. But some of the things they put in there, they do without declaring on the label, you know. So the truth is that some of the products that we are consuming in the country is not wholesome. And we've had, we've seen videos of it, documentaries made, um, hidden cameras capturing some of the chemicals that they put in that they didn't declare on the label. And it's not just only uh, with tomato paste, but even some other products that are on the market. So the reality is that we are consuming products that are not wholesome. And pro these products can be made locally. Yes, we've had challenges in the past, looking at factories like the Northern Star Tomato Factory, the Palugo Tomato Factory, which keeps kept shutting and opening and because of different reasons. We have all these challenges. Some of the factories that were supposed to make paste are so huge, they are not getting um, the locals to supply them the tomato because they prefer to sell to um, market queens, tomato queens or middlemen for, for them to receive their money quickly because sometimes these factories do not pay them on time. I can elaborate a lot more on the challenges that these factories who have set up properly are facing, you know, and that is how sometimes they are not able to keep up 
and sometimes they have to downscale or sometimes they end up completely shutting like the case of um northern star tomato factory and a number of tomato factories so there are issues that affect you know the local production on that kind of scale and that was even being uh these challenges were even relating to tomato paste production where um they're giving a lot a lot more tomato uh solids so um they have to heat up the tomato and you know make sure that they concentrate it and all that all these were issues but if we are accepting tomato paste because now we have moved from um we are accepting tomato mix because we have moved from paste you know the, most of these factories are now diluting the paste or so they bring the concentrate they dilute it a lot more i hope you're following the 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 the, the <laughs> the sequence of, of you know what I'm trying to the picture. So now they're downgrading from paste to mix, which is has less tomato, and that is what we are consuming now. We can make this product easily, going around the challenges of making tomato paste, but they're making it cheaper using local tomato. It could be woso woso, it could be um, Roma, no, uh, Bulga variety, Akoma. Pectomic, pectofec, I get all those varieties. We can use them to make tomato mix using technologies and methodologies that are available. He, um, so West has worked on them. I'm also doing my bit. And, you know, pitch it like those who are interested in adopting these technologies can get to make these products for us locally so that we do not have to depend on these products that are coming in. Thank you so much. I mean, I know a lot of people that are, are watching are also cringing the fact that, you know, we, we allow we allow all of this rubbish into the country. Um, and sometimes you, you think to yourself, I've had so many shows where we talk about health issues in Ghana, okay, while diabetes is high, fibroids in women, you know, so many things that are happening um, in this country. And sometimes it could be because of some of these things. They are putting so many things in our tomato paste that we are not even aware of, okay? And they get into the country. Now for us, um, on this show, we want to look at the solutions. Where do we move on from here? Fiannis, please tell us, you know, how we can get involved. What do we need to do? What can people in the diaspora, people in Ghana, how can we get involved in investing in tomato industry so that we'll have healthier um, paste or, you know, um, and, and, and um, healthier tomatoes for, for the community? You know, tell us what we can do. We are ready to invest. Someone's like, look, I'm ready to go. What do we have to do? Please share with us the 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 the, the solution. <clears throat> okay, uh, um, I am sure that we know what the problem is. Okay, once once we have identified the problem, we have identified a problem. Now the solution is simple. The solution is simple. We just process our own tomatoes, but we use the correct technology, the right systems and methodologies. It's there. Okay, uh, it's been proven. I've got engineers on my team. We, 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 we have proven it over and over again, even in Kenya. I met uh, uh, Dr. Mavis in Kenya. We even done it over there. So it's just a matter, you know, we need, we need investments. Uh, <clears throat> it need not be a huge investment. It can be a huge investment. It need not be. Ideally, I would say uh, uh, um, that these type of operation systems can easily be put up in, a, uh, in, a, in, in tomato growing regions that you don't have necessarily a centralized processing facility because if you transport tomatoes over distance another 30 percent goes to waste so you can have a farmer group or a consortium or something you put up a system there you do 500 kilograms an hour you can do a thousand kilograms an hour you can go big you can do 5,000 kilogram an hour the point is the system does not require the energy the pumps uh, uh, you need high pressure pumps, you need evaporation systems. These things are a lot of money. So, <laughs> yeah, well, what uh, you ask, uh, what needs to be done? Um, it, uh, the numbers are, 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 are simple, right? 
we pay 120 or whatever US for a tomato. We we make a tomato at 12 bricks. We can even go 24 bricks a tomato paste, right? With the characteristics of tomato mix, and it's still cost effective. <clears throat> um, I don't know if I answer <laughs> Uh, give the right answer. What needs to be done is, you know, we need investments. Put up the factory. And how much? How it. much? How much investments um, do we actually need? You know, you you spoke about the consortium, um, but how much d does one need to invest in this? Well, um, <clears throat> depends on on, on on what ticket size. Uh, let me give an example. I've sent the example to Dr. Mavis. Uh, let's say, um, where is uh, my thing now? Sorry. If 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 one looks at a um, um, if one looks at say a 500, five tons an hour uh, uh, fruit processing, right? Uh, uh, you can produce okay. 440 metric tons of, of product, right? That's a revenue value of 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 of, of uh, a month of 600,000 USD. Such an investment will be around 2 million, 2.5 million. Your gross profit is 5 million, okay? You can go bigger, you can go smaller. It is like scaling. Um, for a smaller investment for 250,000, you can make an ROI of 30% of over two years. You can pay off the investment over two years. So it's a matter of if they are investors <coughs> and they have a ticket, then uh, me and my engineers, you know, we design and give the, 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 the most uh, cost efficient uh, uh, proposal. You can go to, as I say, to 10 tons, 10 tons per hour. Okay, let me put it this way, Palugu, Palugu, uh, uh, it's 2000, met, uh, 2000 tons a day, okay? <coughs> Um, if you take the whole processing system, it's a fraction of the cost of those 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 uh, those investments in Kualugu and uh, uh, <clears throat> Dangoti and famous brands in South Africa. Um, and I hope I get my message over. You don't need a 2,000 metric ton per hour factory. You can have a 100 kilogram an hour up to 10,000 kilogram an hour. It depends on your investment ticket. I hope I could. Yes, no. So, Loretta, so let's let's look at some of the questions. So, Loretta says, "What can we get the specifics as to what we need to invest, please?" The specifics. Um, what would that entail? The the, <laughs> the amount. <laughs> So I, I think you mentioned some of the amount. So there's you've mentioned like two million. Um, you've mentioned um, smaller amounts as well in terms of you know what can be produced. Um, is there? So if somebody wanted to start, how how do they start? Do they contact you, Doc? Do they contact you? You know, if somebody has the investment, somebody just said to me, Denta, I've got a, a land. I've got a thirty. Um, what I've got a. 1,000 acres of land that I want to do tomato with. You know, what, what's the process? How do they start? Okay, all right. When it comes to, to the horticultural side of it, the, I'm not the expert there, uh, but if the gentleman, uh, Dr. Mavis, they, we have other people that we know that can keep the agricultural. I have people in South Africa that can help. <clears throat> but <clears throat> when, when it comes to the processing side, me and Dr. Davis comes in. So anyone that wants to ask about processing can contact me and copy Dr. Mavis and we'll give them all the numbers, figures, uh, whatever they want. The best would be uh, my particular system, uh, contact me and ask me and I will work out, I will work out the numbers for them. That's, okay. That's what I will, would, would say. Okay. How does one get market for semi-processed tomato or paste? Um, then the, 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 road, the, road, the road to the market is normally through distributors, okay? Um, and the distributors will deliver to the markets, the, the, the wholesalers, okay? That's a route to market. It's very, it's very, very simple. It's about price. 
and they're the right quality. I've done a consumer survey in 2019 uh, by way of questionnaires. We try, we, we've sent our people across, across uh, Ghana. We talk to distributors, consumers. The distributors say they will definitely buy if the product quality is correct and <coughs> the, the, the price is in line with, with what they have. It's not a problem. Uh, I sat with distributors uh, in uh, Spindex Road in a factory there. I showed them the product and I said, okay, bring the product. To get the market is, is, is I believe, is low complexity. Uh, our, our survey we've done, consumers consumers over 77% over said they will definitely try a product from local content. Uh, they say it's needed. They say it's a way to support their farmers. They are wary, becoming wary of all these imported products. So uh, if I, if I hope my answer is correct. Uh, the complexity of getting a market is, 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 is very low. There is a healthy user demand. Uh, consumers, consumers will, will definitely buy. We have done the surveys. Even, can you imagine, can you imagine we come up with a product? We don't even have to do marketing. The newspapers will market for you. For, for, Right? It will be such a big flash. <laughs> it is an ongoing topic. Every year in the media, the question is out. Why don't we process it? Now, <laughs> the question is, why does it come in? It's quite difficult to test to test what's inside because you do have to do carbon isotope tests and you've got to send it to Singapore or USA. It's very expensive. So to the defense of the authorities, um, the, the means and the capability Having those type of equipments uh, is not readily available, but they all know they all know it's it's not the right product. But it will be difficult for them to prove it, say in a court, for instance. Thank you, thank you so much, Doc. Was there anything else that you wanted to add to that? Yes. Yeah, so I think um, what he's trying to say is um, the methodologies and the systems are pretty simple. Um, they are not yep. as complex as what we have in Pualugu. All those are big factories that um, the government was hopeful could get consistent supply. And I mean, there's so many, like I said, there's so many, you know, issues, but those were huge and are not able to, to deliver also. So he's talking about systems that can be designed per your budget if you want to make a certain quantity or, but he's proposing that it's set up in some communities where they are making the tomatoes, you know, so that you can easily process close to site, ready mark, I mean, you can get ready supply, and then also you can get locals to, you know, feed into the factory. So based on how much you want to invest or how big you want to go, they can tailor something to your needs. And addressing that question about production, Sometimes you don't even have to do the production yourself. You don't have to plant the tomato yourself. Some factories had to grow the tomatoes themselves because they had such huge setups. And because they were not getting the quantities that they needed to feed the factories, they had to have a backup plan by producing the, the tomatoes, you know, also to be able to add up. But if you're able to get consistent supply in these uh, communities where you may be stationed, it's very easy to be able to process it in the form that he's talking about using the methodologies where you don't have to um, concentrate it that much. We're talking about a lower breaks. However, we're talking about pure products, less adulteration and less additives. Um, he also talked about uh, detection of some of these materials. I mean, he is in the, in the space. He helped put up some of the factories here in Ghana. Um, we may not be able to easily pick up those additives because we don't sometimes test for them. You need certain complex um, and they know that they can get away sometimes with, with what, you know, is added. And I'm not saying all oh, everybody does it, but they are in the industry and they try to make maximize profits, you know, by adding some of these additives that they don't even declare. And for instance, if you're adding sugar to a product and you do not declare on the packaging, and somebody is diabetic and constantly eating that product. It is a fraudulent thing. If you're putting 
the, the FDA standards or the Ghana standard says for tomato paste, natural color, and you are adding artificial color, and somebody is allergic to artificial color, it's a fraudulent thing. That's why we're saying there's a lot of fraud in the system. And um, it's become, when, when we say uh, red gold, it's like people are having a field day with it. They're, they're doing stuff and maximizing profit. So for them, it is a very um, easy way to make money. And unfortunately, it's not only in Ghana, Denta. It is a problem in Africa. Africa, you consume a lot of these products. So in as much as we are proposing these methodologies, solar drying, um, he does he may not really want to go into details, you know, but he's saying that there are options and it's a form of a product that is between the paste and the mix, but it's a natural product, it has a higher solids and all of that. But we also have to sensitize the consumers. You remember he said that before he did the the, the product. He wanted. He had. He did a lot of consumer service. I mean, we had a chat when I went to. We went to Kenya. We actually met in Kenya for the first time, to talk about the issues on, you know, tomato value, uh, tomato in Ghana. And he had a lot of data that he had collected in Ghana about consumer preferences, consumer, you know, um, the assessment and all of that. And it all points to the fact that if we did have alternative quality products, then people would want to consume. You understand, Ghanaians are becoming more health conscious, but we haven't made those products available for them because we think it's expensive to make them. And then companies have empowered us by bringing it in here. So the locals have not found these methodologies. How do you make them? So it's pretty, um, uh, uh, there is a solution because we're talking about solutions today. There's a solution for people who want to look in, into options and um, the proper things have to be done. You really have to get involved and link up. And then you can have a, um, some chats with him, um, your ideas and all of that. And he will take you through a lot of the ideas that he has so that we can really move this conversation forward. We want to talk, in fact, from hence, we'll be talking solutions, solutions, <laughs> solutions, because you, like you see, I can see on your face, you're so overwhelmed with the, with the, with the problems, when they may, when we talk about the, 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 the problem, it's so draining, you know, and I know your data show, it's all about creating opportunities and showing, leading us to the right way, you know, so we are hoping that the conversation is now going to progress. It will be steady Absolutely. because it is, it's, yeah, it is not easy to change people's mindset and all of that. So we're going to do this progressively. Fantastic. And I think, you know, the next question that is actually on, um, I'm going to bring on Kwame, Mr. Kwame Donkov from the Ministry of Trade. Hello, Mr. Kwame. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining me on the show at such short notice. The pleasure always. I'm sure it's because of Kofi Ado. <laughs> yeah, it's Kofi linked me. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much um, for joining me on tonight's show. We are basically talking about the investment opportunities in the tomato industry. Now, yeah. as somebody that works for the ministry, the Ministry of Trade, can you please give us an insight of the opportunities in tomatoes in your ministry? Thank you very much uh, for this question and also for linking me to this conversation, which is also something that uh, the ministry has been uh, debating on for some time. Actually, I work for domestic trade and uh, my section deals more of the trade than of the industry. However, um, if we would recall, and as um, Mavis has uh, elaborated, governments upon governments have uh, tried to establish factories, process tomatoes since independence. And uh, Gihok, uh, the Gihoks had a lot of uh, tomato processing factories all over, including what is now uh, Northern Star or the, what used to be 
Pualugu tomato tree. And uh, these factories have not survived the times, particularly because of, uh, as indicated earlier, the supply of uh, tomatoes to these factories. Most of them could not establish their own outgrower systems and had depended on the farmers who could not be loyal to the factory system. Some of them even took loans from factories urged to produce for them, but could not uh, uh, follow their pledges and had to, uh, as uh, economic, economic beings, seek markets elsewhere because uh, the local traders could offer higher uh, prices. Yes, so these have failed, but um, with the inception of uh, government's policy of uh, one district, one factory, uh, many who are ready and willing can be supported by government to establish maybe sizable factories that they can uh, sort of uh, manage rather than putting up the big ones like a Pualugu, mm -hmm. uh, the Wench former Wenchi Tomato factory and so on. So we can have sizable and manageable small units that can be sited in tomato growing areas like um, Akumadai, Techiman, Tiobodom areas where they can support the farmers as and when they harvest and thereby uh, avert uh, post-harvest losses and also uh, extend the shelf life of what they produce. So these opportunities are there with the one district, one factory, and we encourage um, investors to go into it. But while I still have this um, opportunity and uh, having been in involved in the trade aspect, I wish to also uh, delve into the challenges of the tomato traders who have been facing a whole lot of uh, challenges in, in travels and also by armed robbers. We recently heard them, we heard that uh, some of them were attacked, their drivers killed and so on. And uh, because of that, uh, uh, the police have uh, put in place some uh, system to support them and accompany them from uh, Techiman, from Kumasi right away to Paga, so that they can, they can feel safe. So now they go in convoys supported by the police. The police take them li like a relay from Kumasi to Techiman, Techiman to Bupe, Bupe to Tamale, Tamale to Bolga, Bolga to Paga. And then they enter Burkina safe. We recently uh, traveled along the route to assess the challenges and to see how they can be supported for uh, a trade uh, that is uh, maybe as uh, said by maybe say uh, $99 million. However, during the uh, trip, we realized that we could also as well produce these to, uh, the, 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 pro, uh, the tomato in Ghana, even if we think that the off season can take the traders to Burkina. We uh, had a conversation with the Upper East Director of Agriculture who said that the ministry is trying to support the farmers in the Upper East to grow the, uh, the quality uh, tomato so that the traders will not bypass them. And I think that currently the Burkina is only a, a gap being filled by off season, during off-season uh, tomato production. So we are 
uh, also in conversation as part of uh, one district, uh, one village, one dam, to support the farmers to grow the best quality tomato so that the traders would also participate in uh, buying from our own and thereby uh, spend that amount in Ghana so that the farmers too can improve their lot and uh, enjoy some little bit of life. So we are tackling these uh, together, both uh, supporting the traders to look inward and also supporting the uh, uh, opening up for investors to also um, try to add value to tomatoes and uh, uh, extend the tomato life and also consumer promote consumer welfare. Fantastic. Thank you so much for the insight. So what goes yeah. into setting up or being part of the one district, one factory? If I can see that my my uh, my viewers, some of them are already forming their own consortium and they're now networking and getting to know each other and want to do something. How does one set up uh, uh, or get involved in a one district, one factory for a tomato factory? Thank you very much. Uh, like all other one district, one factory uh, establishments, government supports the investor one by access to land where you want to locate. They also uh, facilitate uh, the development of a business plan that you can use to access uh, uh, loans from the banks. So uh, the secretariat at the ministry is open to investors. You can come for uh, preliminary discussions where you want to site your factory and uh, we will look at uh, access to land and also to um, electricity and other uh, amenities to the, to the area, as well as um, access to funds by linking you to um, when do you want a, a financial intermediaries. Okay, so there, there are, there's, so there's one, um, one district, one factory um, supply loans for people setting up? Not exactly. Okay. However, however, the secretariat will help you to develop a winnable uh, business plan that you can use to access loans from the financial intermediaries that have been identified by the program. So you will take your own loan and, 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 and set up instead of a government, government uh, giving you loans by itself. Okay. Thank you so much um, for this. Um, Doc, it looks like a lot of people want to get involved and form a consortium. Um, and I think that I want um, um, the, um, Theo to kind of go through the, the investment opportunities. I want you to kind of tell us if you invest this much, because I know that you said, you know, if you invest two million, you can get maybe five million. You know, let's put in perspective of the investment opportunities and how much you can invest and how much you can reap. Well, um, I just want to open something up. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah. Um something up. Can you answer this question that's on the screen? Uh, okay, let me just see. How about the usage of pesticides and herbicides? Yeah. Um I'm I think he's trying to ask um me to comment about the use of uh, pesticides and herbicides on tomatoes. Well, what I can say is there's a general concern that 
um, farmers are using a lot more pesticides and herbicides on the tomato. And as such, um, there's a lot of complaints that these tomatoes, uh, they're forcing them to ripe, basically. We've all, all heard of that. Um, I would like to think that the extension offices, you know, who used to, the, who used to go on an inspection and kind of teach the farmers what to do and how to apply these pesticides and all, are not, we can't really see a lot of them in, in the system these days. Some Somehow we, we are not um, getting the, the help that we need from them. I don't know what the reason is, but it will be very good for the ministry, MOFA, to look at that model where we're sending a lot more extension offices into the producer communities to monitor the use of herbicides and pesticides because we're seeing a lot more of pesticide residue on vegetables in general and not just on tomatoes. So in order to monitor the farmers and teach them, some really don't know because they feel like the more you add, the better it is, you know, to, but every crop has a threshold. And so we need these extension officers to help support the farmers to do the right thing. I think that's one of the most uh, um, practical solutions. Apart from that, you can just add only advise the farmers to apply the, in the, in the rate, at the rate at which they are specified or else we're running into some of these issues where we're seeing a lot more spoilage because of that. Because of the Thank overuse you, of pesticides. Okay. And pesticides. okay, all right. Theo, are you ready? Uh, yeah, uh, if I can answer this way, the market opportunity in Ghana, uh, we we talk about we talk about uh, container loads FCLs. All right, it's about twenty tons in Ghana. Uh, there's about six hundred FCL market. So six hundred, it's ten thousand eight hundred metric tons per month. It's uh, of, of product. It's a lot. Um, <clears throat> The revenue value per month is like 15 to 20 million USD uh, per annum, more than 200,000 million USD. Um, the market is huge. If, wow. if, if, let's say the total available market in Ghana is 600, 10,000 metric tons a month, an investor, the, 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 the service of available market is like 100. Let's say the investor gets 20% of that market to start off with. It is huge. Um, it's a very huge market. And the, 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 uh, if an investor puts something in like 2.4 uh, million USD, um, <clears throat> it's about 22 containers a month. Okay? So... <laughs> To capture 22 containers out of 600, uh, it won't take won't take a lot of rocket science, because there is there is there's a, a anticipation from everybody, government, media, the, the 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 citizens of Ghana, the consumers. There's anticipation for having a product from local content. One can ask anybody on the market. In the street, they will tell you that. Um, as as the doctor was saying, I think a very good way to go about this is not one huge big factory. Uh, then you need a lot of inflow of raw material, and you won't be able to get it. So it will be 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 better, I believe, to have smaller factories. I'm not talking uh, Mickey Mouse factories. Uh, 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 but smaller manageable units that you can move fast and you can do the product within food safety um, uh, systems. Because food safety uh, plays an important role. You don't want to make something and the product gets contaminated with uh, pathogens. Um, yeah. I hope I could. This is incredible. So if you were investing something like two million dollars you could be earning what how much 15 million uh yeah two million dollars in 12 months your gross profit is like uh, six 
six million uh, USD. That's over twelve months. Six million. Wow. <laughs> now you go over, you know, okay. Over, over you, 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 you recover your investment in 12, 24 months. Now that is a good return on investment. And it's not a scam, it is the numbers, right? We know what the selling price is. We know what the cost is, okay? We know what the, 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 the energy cost is, right? We know the, 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 the cost of sales, uh, the distribution cost. So it's just it's a simple numbers. It's standards that's available. So we're not doing, uh, we're not thumb sucking. You know, we know exactly what the, what the opposition is doing. We know their costs, we know their energy costs, we know where we can get them. Uh, one uh, um, one, one uh, uh, um, person I put on the group, we must disrupt, okay? Now, let me tell you something. I've been speaking to an Italian company about the systems. I didn't, and they, they are one of the major suppliers of equipment um, in Africa, in West Africa, for for tomato mix processing. <laughs> okay, I gave them an overview of my system, and he says, "You're kidding This is disruptive. This will revolutionize the industry." It's not that I want to sell Trevor. Everybody knows it. Everyone, everyone knows to disrupt this industry. You come with a with a simple, easy technology. You discard what is this, the paradigm in the world on tomato processing. And uh, <laughs> yeah, the opportunity is there. And it's for our people, it's for our farmers. The farmers must. Uh, I have an organization I called African Partnership for Change. We are, uh, uh, our enterprise is a social enterprise. Okay. The farmer must benefit, right? And what more? Than, 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 than tomato in West Africa and Ghana. It's such a high consumption. West Africa is the third highest consumer of tomato in the world. It's time wow. that we disrupt the industry. Absolutely. I agree with that. Doc, can you see what's on the screen at the moment? What my viewers are talking about? It says if, let's say, 100 of us come, <clears throat> excuse me, with a thousand USD each or more, that will be a hundred thousand USD, and we can get a loan to like D one F. I think, um, Mr. Wow, well, would do you want to uh, address this question? If a group of people come to and raise an amount of money, can your ministry help them um, through the one D one F concept to secure maybe more money from Exim Bank? to put up a structure where they can operate. The, the amount of $100,000 can put up a sizable uh, tomato factory with the assistance of uh, I mean, Exim Bank. Help? So come again? Yeah. Now, yes, with the support from... of Exim Bank. Okay. They can. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, if they do have some money, they can come. We will assist them with the location and also with the access to uh, the financial intermediaries, including Exim Bank. Okay. So yes, I think Denta, what we're trying to say is, of course, if there are opportunities to access loans using the methodologies that have been developed. Um, we're not looking at huge factories which haven't really been sustainable in the past, but then looking at new methodologies, putting up small scale, medium scale factories that can produce this kind of product that we are talking about. I think um, if we come up and, and, and move this forward, we could uh, address some of the issues. And he's talking about this being very disruptive because um, it, 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 if we give ourselves the power, you know, and we decide that this is a future and hands are good, and we commit to it, I think um, we will we will see a lot of um, money being made in this sector. Yeah. And 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 power being given to our farmers so that they're not committing suicide. 
so that they're being paid right and being looked after. Yeah. Um, job creation, yeah. which we, we've, we, you know, Ghana has been crying about um, job creation. There's a huge job creation for people in Ghana. Um, and so I think that, you know, like I said at the beginning of this, of this program is that the opportunity is now. Um, Theonis has actually done, he's, he's basically done a feasibility study for you. You know, he's got a handbook already done of the opportunities and how it can work and how you can invest and the tools in which you need to invest. So I think that guys, if you are seriously interested in this, this is the time um, for you to email Dr. Mavis um, and you know, let's start having the conversation. We can make the city stable by investing in tomato. That's how I feel. I feel like, you know, how our city is going up and down, up and down, up and down. If we are bringing these mechanisms, this innovation into our tomato industry, we can make our own city stable in this country. I don't know if I'm uh, 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 <laughs> if I'm wrong, but I think that you know these are opportunities that can make our city very stable in this country. Um, um, uh, Kwame, isn't that so? Or am I wrong? No, you are not <laughs> wrong at all. Are you hearing me? Yes. Yes, I'm saying that's correct. Indeed, the uh, city has not been stable only because there's been so many traders chasing the foreign exchange so as to uh, bring in imported goods. And many, and that is also uh, probably due to the high interest rates that the banks offer. Because, because it is only trading that uh, you can do to recover such interest rates in investing in the uh, industries and factories where the return is uh, uh, long term, you cannot go with such interest rates. So I believe that um, if you're able to let the uh, money stay in, in, in Ghana, we can uh, help the CDT stabilize. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I mean, I can't thank my guest enough. It's been an hour and a half of, of great conversation. I don't know, Chrissy, is there any more questions that maybe I've left out? But I know that, you know, um, somebody just mentioned about land. Where is a good place to buy land to do tomato farming, um, Mr. Kwame? For tomato farming, uh, uh, maybe I can say about three quarters of the country can, uh, can be uh, good for tomato farming right from the uh, southeast coast through the middle belt to the northern region you can uh, farm tomatoes so the, do they want to farm or they want to invest in tomato processing if for okay, farming that's true. That's true. so yeah. please give us both both scenarios please give us both in scenarios Yes, as I indicated earlier, the Bono Ahafu region, the Ashanti region, some parts of Greater Accra, northern, upper, and upper east regions are, 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 are good areas for tomato farming. However, if they want to uh, set up processing plants, and because tomato is bulky, it is advisable to look for where tomato uh, is already uh, grown, uh, being grown for, for uh, the markets, so that uh, you can set up in these areas, such as Akumadine, to uh, Tiobodom, and uh, Techimai areas, the Upper East, and some parts of the uh, Northern region, in, including Nare, Rigu, the Savannah areas, where tomato is already being farmed. So these are the scenarios. You can uh, go to existing farms to establish or close to existing uh, tomato growing uh, regions, or you can start up a farm in these regions, Greater Accra, Asante, Puno, Ahafo, Puno East, um, 
the northern three north and upper east okay thank you so much um mr kwame donko for joining me on the show as i said it was very short notice but i i appreciate the fact that you know you have um you have come on and you've given us insight on the one district one factory what are your last words to Ghanaians and other you know people who are watching african americans um, that are all interested in investing in Ghana. What are your last few words for them? Thank you very much, uh, Denta. Uh, before I give the remarks, I will want to take the opportunity to, to thank uh, Dr. Redu Asar and uh, Theonis for their great insights. And I, I'm happy to have joined this uh, conversation to hear from the great work that they have done in, in this area. And uh, my last words uh, are that um, tomato trading and also investment in tomato processing have a great potential for this country. And those who will want to enter into these areas will by all means recover, recoup and uh, make profits. As if we take the growing of tomato, for example, the amount of money that Ghanaians take to Burkina Faso between December and May, that is the off season of Ghana, it's uh, unthinkable. So if we go into planting in Ghana, we can let that amount stay. And if we look at the amount of uh, money that we use to import tomato uh, paste and other processed tomatoes, it's also equally uh, uh, mind blowing. So we can put in our investment in the country. And as long as uh, we like our uh, jollof and our gravies and our uh, with tomato, you will never uh, be found wanting. You will surely uh, recover. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Kwame. And I hope that, you know, when we do come, the process is made smooth for us. That's one of the other things. Once, you know, some of us get very eager and we really want to do something in our motherland in our country and then we get yes. blocked there's always blockages and hurdles for us to jump we're hoping that as we you know we have a good heart to come and join this industry that we will get the support that you're saying and the love and and the encouragement um to really input um, our services and our investment into ghana surely that is why uh, kofi secretariat is there in the ministry and uh, we are ready and willing to support our own to invest in areas that uh, can be profitable and also um, leave this country out of uh, poverty. We are very eager to support people to create wealth, to create jobs and to have decent living. And. Uh, as uh, somebody is trying to find out how we can prevent uh, past failures. That is why yeah. I say that uh, we should try to go into sizable mini factories that we can manage instead of uh, looking at uh, huge uh, structures that will uh, involve huge capital and, and, and yet uh, will require uh, uh, large farms to support. Whereas we don't have outgrowers and we want to depend on uh, uh, these uh, handkerchief farm uh, farms, I mean the small farms, and, uh, and they will also want to uh, maximize or optimize their profits and will want to look elsewhere, it's going to be difficult. So if you can set up a averagely small to medium factories, processing plants, we, we, we can uh, prevent uh, past failures. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you joining us on the show. God bless you. And it's a pleasure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay. Um, be honest, what are your last words of encouragement? Give us some vim so that we can leave tonight, go into bed that yes, this is the industry that we want to get into. Please, what are your last words to people who are very excited about the opportunities in the tomato industry? What are your last words to them? My last words is the opportunity is there. It's not, you know, it's pie in the sky. It's there. It's been proven. Uh, <clears throat> I appreciate what Kwame was saying, right? We go for medium scale, smaller scales. We look at the small farmers. We bring back Prince Odaisi, the Ghanaian worker that left his farm and he travels to Italy. And there he writes back to his, he, he writes, I can't tell my wife and kids what the hell I'm going through here while working on a farm. It is there, the time is now. We have the technology, we have proven it. We have, we, I have product in front of me that I've done with local tomatoes. Uh, you should have shown it to us, Dana. Show it to us. Show us the let's, let's have a look. Wow. Okay. Uh, uh, we can see okay. it. Uh -huh. Well, see well it. this this is with the system. I do it and I tell I ask people in uh, in 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 in, in so I say, okay, yeah, there's a method, go test it for me. This is what they come up with. Wow. It works, people. It works. It's very simple. It is uh, cost effective. Uh, <clears throat> It's there. The work has been done. The footwork has been done. There's a, we can give a manual. It's not the manual. <laughs> but with, with people like uh, the Dr. Mavis, myself, we can set you up. Uh, and importantly, we bring back, back friends who say that works in, in Italy on a, on, a, on a tomato farm and he left his farm. Yeah. 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 yeah, you're absolutely right. Thank you so much. For joining me all the way from SA of South Africa um, on tonight's show. You've been very impactful. Um, someone says, you know, bring him back on the show, Denta, but I want his mic to be better because there was so much knowledge that was flowing that they were finding it very difficult to really hear you, but they knew that what uh, you were saying was, was fantastic. Um, so yeah. they're saying that, you know, um, okay, can you give us, okay, uh, somebody says, this is a question for you. Yeah, look, I would say for a small scale, uh, let's say, what do we define small scale? Let's say, uh, let, I, I, I bring it down to uh, 100 kilogram an hour, 400, 300 kilogram an hour. You're looking at 200 USD, 220,000 USD. You know? it's, it's, it's in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, the scheme of things, it's a lot of the money. I can, I can, if people ask me, right, I can give different scenarios. I'm willing to do that. You know, I can say, I can give a breakdown. I don't know, maybe, say, okay. 100 kilos an hour, up to 10,000 kilos an hour. What is the. Will that help, um, Mr. Well, yeah, I through? think so. I think so. I think that would help because. Um, people have different um, uh, financial, um, they're looking at where they can invest and what money will be able to get them a certain decent kind of um, facility. So yeah. there's a breakdown. If you want, if, if you're aiming at maybe 10 kilos uh, to 30 kilos an hour, there is a figure to that. If you're looking at 100 yeah. kilos up a school, yeah, if you could give us a little, uh, uh, unless, you know, we, we, we don't have time, then we can look at it. And then oh, different, no, we, uh, we, we, we've got time. Yeah, just a little bit, because I think people are trying to put a figure on. So someone says a thousand kilo, uh, 1,000 kilogram per hour. What would a facility like, how much would it okay. take, you know, 1, to, to uh, facilitate? 1,000 kilogram an hour will give me 1,000 kilogram an hour will give me um, four, four containers per month, um, GP one million, uh, 1,000 K per hour. If I say 350,000 to 400 USD is, is plenty. It's a safe, safe margin to work in. All right, but uh, just to be fair to me, <laughs> I got a feeling for this. Okay, so what I do in designs, what I do in designs is you can go overboard and you put in 
conveyors and all sorts of things. Right? Most of the time you don't need it. So if I look at a thousand kilogram per hour of fruit, I can do some some things I can do manually. So what you will do, you'll cut up the fruit. I don't really have a big machine, I use a blender. Then we have to strain it. You know, I can make a simple process. So uh, our approach with my engineers is we make a simple solution. Because you can pick up the phone and you phone Italy or you phone Germany and you buy the most beautiful uh, Mercedes Benz and Ferrari machines. We don't do that. We're from Africa. I'm from South Africa. We make custom bulk machines, all right? We bring the cost down, okay? So if, if the question is a thousand kilo, uh, kilo an hour, 350 to 400 is plenty. I could probably cut the costs as well. That's 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 amazing. Um, wow, I know that you're already getting people's WhatsApp numbers. You you guys are setting up the WhatsApp group. This is fantastic. I love I love shows like this. It shows that you know people are really interested in the industry. Mavis, I'm sure that you're getting emails right now because um, there's a lot of people here that are saying that they want to invest, um, but they're saying that I think that a lot of them want to kind of join partnership a consortium and and say look there's 20 of us here's two hundred thousand dollars what can we do um in this industry okay. what can we do fast so um and i'm well put me in i would definitely be investing and put my thousand dollars or two thousand dollars or whatever it is that we all come up with um because we need solutions in ghana and i think that you know us as Ghanaians and us as people that really want Ghana to grow, um, we need to take it back. Um, the people need to start investing. Um, we can't rely on government for everything. Um, you know, since independence, the man said, you know, they've been trying to set up factories and do the right thing for the tomato industry, and it still hasn't happened. And so, you know, it's down on us. The onus is on us as, as Ghanaians, as a citizens, as in people that really want a better country, that we are eating better things for ourselves that we are not eating things that are you know that have got coloring and all of these artificial stuff that are, are killing us in fact um there's so there's a high rate of diabetes in this country and and i'm not surprised at the reason why let's look at investing right now guys the time is now um look you can make this money in ghana we haven't even talked about the other african countries and the opportunities there um Ghana is the gateway to Africa. Let's invest in Ghana first, and then we can look at the other opportunities in other African countries. Um, Doc, I don't know if you have your last words or anything that you'd like to say. Chrissy, please do let me know if there's any other um, questions that we haven't answered as well. Yeah, and I think we should um, put Ethan's um, email address as well. He can also send emails and ask for more um, information from him. He has a, a lot of break, you know, the breakdown and all of that. Um, for my final I'll just put words, it on the screen. Uh, okay, thank you. So, um, you know, it's time. It's time that we look at practical solutions that we can employ locally to help reduce post harvest losses of tomato, to cut down on the imports. Um, and also to improve health and well-being because this this uh, product is what we, I mean, we basically, I say we drink tomato in this country. I mean, eating is not an understatement. Everything has a splash or a toss of tomato. Um, but I also want us to think about the local farmers. I mean, that's also something that I'm really passionate about in all of this we need to look at the plight of tomato farmers. And we have all been enjoying jollof rice and have been at war with um, um, Nigeria about who makes the jollof rice, but we are not making authentic, who ma I mean, who makes the best jollof rice? It's even become an international, you know, <laughs> war. But we've forgotten that authentic jollof rice is not really made here in Ghana because we are not using, I mean, uh, pure, tomato products made in this country. So I would like to end by saying that if you want to cut down on ex imports um, and do more 
to make our jollof as, as authentic as it should be. Uh, it will also help farmers make profitable livelihood from this very essential food that we are proud of. And as West Africans, we may compete as to who makes the best jollof rice, but we do not have to compete at the expense of tomato farmers who are already struggling to make meaningful livelihoods. So as we eat and enjoy our jollof rice, we should pray and hope that we can uh, make our, uh, our products, tomato products locally, so that we can empower these farmers and make our jollof rice as authentic as it ought to be made. <laughs> Thank you, Denta. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Mavis. You're absolutely right. Um, the farmers, we really need to look at our farmers. Um, they are the ones that supply us with our food um, and we they need to be looked after. Now, I'm going to again say my intro to you again. Even though Ghana grows enough tomatoes to serve its market, it imports 99 million worth of tomatoes from Burkina Faso. Let that sink. Please let that sink. Even though Ghana grows enough tomatoes to serve its market, it imports $99 million worth of tomatoes from Burkina Faso. That should be enough for all of us to sit up and invest in this industry. We should not be allowing this in 2021 to be happening in Ghana. Let's do something about it. Email Dr. Mavis, email Theo. This is the time for us to come together as a group of Ghanaians, as citizens who want the best for Ghana. Enough of the fake things that are coming from China. We can do it right here in Ghana. Again, I'm gonna to talk to you about Dr. Mavis's training that she is doing to impact on this industry. It is happening in June. Um, let me get this off the screen one second. It is happening in June on the 10th to 11th of June, 8.30 in the morning to 4.30. Tomato processing and marketing training. Guys, do not miss out on this opportunity. She has the knowledge, she has the expertise, and trust me, it's about solar drying of tomatoes, an overview of tomato processing technologies, branding and marketing of agribusiness. This is the time, and it's, 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 it's about having the knowledge as well before you go into the industry. And so she is impacting on you the knowledge okay, on the tomato processing industry and the marketing that goes behind it. I'm going to put the link of anybody that is interested in registering. Um, please do register and use the link that I'm going to put up on the comments box. Um, let me do that now. And please, guys, do share this page because I feel that it's very, very important that we are impacting knowledge on ourselves that we share this information out to people. If you haven't watched part one, please do watch part one. Um, and with this training thing, um, when you do it, you get a certificate as well. Um, she will teach you all the tools that you need to set up a tomato processing in Ghana. Guys, I hope that you have enjoyed the show. I hope that you've been, been impacted by this show today. Um, there's a lot of research that has been done by Theonis, by Dr. Mavis. Trust me, things, there's been years of research. Um, Dr. Mavis has been wanting to put this on for years. Um, but finally, um, she is doing it and I want you all to be a part of that. I'll be attending the training myself. I've registered as well. For those of you um, in the diaspora that wanna get involved, just fill out the form and then she will tell you and give you the correct information. But as I said before, let it sink in that we are really throwing money away when the money can stay in Ghana for people, especially our farmers. Um, so thank you all for watching tonight's show. I can't thank you enough. It's been nearly two hours of great conversation. I doesn't even feel like two hours when um, the topic means so much to you. 
Uh, Fiona, thank you so much for joining me. Um, God bless you. Keep up all the amazing work and the knowledge that you're impacting on people's lives. Dr. Mavis, again, I know that we're probably going to do part three <laughs> very soon. Um, but again, thank you so much. Um, I know that, you know, um, you're doing an amazing, you're doing an amazing job and we really, really do appreciate you. Thank you so much for again, joining me on The Dentist Show. Thank you. Okay. All right, guys, I hope that you've enjoyed the show. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the show. Please do, 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 do um, email Dr. Mavis and Theonis. Um, I have put out their, I'll put out their email addresses once more before I leave. Let me just copy and paste it here um, for you all to get in touch. Let's not just be, you know, talking and then we don't act. Let's actually act, okay, and do this for Mother Ghana. Um, hey, blind guy, his wife, and their life. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. Uh, one of my, my big fans, uh, you and Kwame are my number one. Thank you so much for always tuning in to the show. Really appreciate you. Richard Adumafo, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Um, I hope that you've been impacted. I hope that you've enjoyed. I hope that you're connecting with each other. It's very, very important um, that this message gets out to the masses. We must invest. All of us must invest um, in this industry. Um, let me say a big thank you to all my people that have been supporting me on the show. Vesta London Beauty for her lip glaze. You could go online and order one of her lip glazes. It's amazing. It's nice. It's got different um, colors, you know, nude colors. Very, very good for your lips. Now, if you're looking for the best shit all, as I keep saying, for those of you that don't believe me, right, this shit all is the best shit all, okay? Um, you need to go out there and buy one. You just try it for me and tell me what you think. Try the shit all. That's the email, um, the website. Try, just try the shit and tell me that it's not nice. She does spices, she does jollof rice spices. She's a young Ghanaian girl under the age of 25 and she's just doing it and doing it well. So guys, let's support, let's support, let's support. Um, again, I know that you've seen me rocking my Ghana top. You know, I'm for Ghana all day, every day, okay? Um, get your designer tea top. Um, you can go on the website, designertea.com, order your Ghana top. If you're, from, if you're from Nigeria, you can have your Nigeria. If you're from Jamaica, if you're from St. Lucia, UK, you can rock your top. Okay, so make sure that you go online to design a tea, okay, design a tea um, and, you know, grab your top. Very, very, very important. Pa, 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 pa. Now, for those of you that are doing your PCR test before you come to Ghana, please use Anglia DNA. Um, the website is on the screen at the moment um, and get your test done. If you're also leaving from the UK and you need your test kit, they also do that as well. So um, they are certified. They are certified by the UK government. So do go out there and uh, you know use them now you know if you watch my shows you saw um you must have seen me promote this young girl that's done her own toothpaste she's only what i think she was nine um toothpaste tablets for young children again guys amazing let's support our young children that are growing up and are being very very in innovative um tubelets.com is the website to go on and you can you know um get one for your children and your nieces and nephews um to use um Aya cards by my boss um you know black owned business doing amazing cards for the community again guys i'm going to put the link here go on there order your birthday card and do that now if you haven't already bought my daughter's shea butter, black soap, um, sapo, guys, go out there and buy one. I'm going to put the website on the um, comment section right now as well. Let's support. Um, she's also got, you know, um, braids um, 
as well. So you can use that as well. Um, I think that's it. I've done all my marketing, <laughs> all my marketing stuff now. Um, guys, please, I hope that you've enjoyed the show. Um, God bless you all. Please do remember that we are still in coronavirus time. So do wear your mask. Um, do social distance as much as possible. And um, if you haven't already got your vaccination, please do get your vaccination um, because we don't want any more family members to die of coronavirus. So please wash those hands as much as possible. Even after coronavirus is gone and they said coronavirus, let's wash our hands. This is something that is so important. When we go out there, we're touching things all the time. There's a lot of germs that are, is out there. So please keep washing those hands. It's very, 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 very important. Um, oh, what, someone said they want my WhatsApp number. Did I see WhatsApp number? Can you send me the link to join the WhatsApp link? You know, you can share links now. So please do share the link with me um, on my Facebook. DM it to me or email it to me, dentarshow at gmail.com. Um, but I hope that you guys are really going to stick to your word and invest in this great opportunity. Thank you all for watching. God bless you all. It's been two hours of a great conversation. And um, I can't thank you enough for watching. <laughs>